Okay, everybody, welcome back to the Fire Channel, best place for long term stock investing. Today, we have um, something very new for you guys a new segment, somewhat familiar, but still pretty new segment in our uh, channel. We also have a new new person on the crew, and that is Mr. John Sun. He is, uh, or at least he wouldn't say this, but I would call him an analyst. He doesn't want to be called an analyst. The analyst who doesn't want to be called an analyst. And, you know, in these stock dive sessions, what we're going to do is we're going to get John to share with you some of the basic and important key salient points of a stock in Busan, Malaysia, and maybe, you know, foreign stocks in the future so that you can kind of cut short your research time about the company. Uh, disclaimer, of course, this is not financial advice. Do your own research. Talk to a financial advisor uh, for decision making. And we also do not own any shares of OFI. We just want to put that out there. So, guys, um, before we begin, I uh, just want to let you know, right, if you're interested in building a six- to seven-figure portfolio from scratch without any financial uh, knowledge or accounting background or things like that, uh, check out our free training, right? Link is in the description or the comment section. Okay, so Jonathan, welcome to the set. This is your first uh, video. Yes. And uh, we're going to start with OFI, right? So maybe let's start off with like, what does uh, OFI actually do? You know, what, what is the full name of OFI also actually? All right. So OFI, it is a snack business. The name of the company is Oriental Food Industries Berhad. So well, like I mentioned just now, they make snacks for you and I. Uh, to buy and consume at a very affordable price. So, yeah, they are not only selling it in locally in Malaysia, but also in international countries. And why are these so popular or famous is because of this one particular brand, which is called Supering. If you have never heard about this, uh, this brand before, well, our ex-Prime Minister, Datuk yeah. Sri Najib, He's the guy with the picture mm -hmm. of a super ring package. Classic, classic. Yeah, that's a classic moment <laughs> when he actually showed when he was actually consuming these uh, snacks, and that actually bring the uh, they actually uh, attracted a lot of people on these uh, snacks. Yep, yep. And not many people actually know about uh, who actually manufactured this uh, super ring. Yes. Uh, yeah, and. It is so... Yeah, um, no, every time when I eat the super ring, right, like it, like your finger gets really orange. Yes, and correct. It's like very nice to eat. Yeah, it's, it's like what, 20 cents, 30 cents a pack, something like that? Yeah, if you would, uh, there's actually a lot of packaging into yep, it. Yep. So you can get it at 20 cents. You also can get it the extra large package, which is about like 8 ringgit to 10 ringgit. Nice, nice. Yeah. Okay, okay. And not only in Malaysia, surprisingly, uh, I'm not sure if you know this K-pop girl group band called Blackpink. Who doesn't know actually at this yeah. point, you know? And they were actually very excited when they actually found out this super ring was at their convenience store in Korea. Really? So, okay. Yeah, so it is actually a very huge deal in the Korea. Yeah, and the Koreans also, the Korean friends also love to eat super ring. And nice. Yeah, yeah. International brand, man. Yeah, man. Let's go, super ring. Okay, so I just want to share with you a little bit about their products. So they actually manufacture five snack segments. So the first one is the traditional snacks. Uh, the second one is more towards like a potato-based kind of snack, like your potato chip uh, or those kind of uh, confectionaries. And then the next few is the cakes, waffle, and the new business segment that they are venturing into is biscuit. So the biscuit segment, they actually have not really fully expanded this uh, business. It is more towards, uh, they actually just started last two years ago. It was okay. like 2019. Yeah, so as you can see in the slides, it's actually fairly new uh, in the company. And yeah, so the two major business segments that they are currently focusing on is the potato snacks and mm -hmm. also the traditional snacks. So, because uh, I, I see that there's two potato snacks, right? Yes, correct. So uh, one of the potato snacks is more towards the brand called Jacobs. I'm not sure if you heard about this so brand. So familiar. I feel like it's a brand that I should know about. Okay, go on. Yeah. So basically, this Jacobs snacks is is something like your... Uh, it's like a Jack and Jill kind of like potato ah, chips. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. And that is more towards the major side of the business. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, they make a lot of these kind of potato chips. Another small potato chips is... I think it's more towards those... Um, do you know those crab flavor potato uh, chips? 
like yes. like a string. Yeah, like, like a one. string, yeah, like yeah, a rota yeah. kind of. Red, and it's a bit red. Yes, yeah, yes, okay. correct. So those are more towards the small uh, business segment that they're actually focusing on. Uh. All yeah. right, all right. Okay, Jonathan, we move on to uh, who's running the show, right? The management, the people behind the scenes and behind the company, right? So what can you tell us about the management? Okay, so this business, it is a family-run kind of business. Mm -hmm. So it is run by the Son family. Mm. Yeah, as you can see, the top picture over here, the one that has the red arrow, that one is, is the founder of the company. His name is Datuk Sri Son Chen Chuan. Nice. Yep, and then he has his two sons also running beside of him, which is Datuk Sri Song Teng Eng and Son Teng Leong. All right. right. So basically, the founder, Mr. Son, he basically oversees the operation, entire operation of the business, where he actually innovates the products flavoring so he actually like tastes and then he wow. makes these kind of products so if you imagine right how he makes the super ring mm. is all of this uh trial and error and also nice. this r d work and then uh, as for his sons uh, basically what they do is they oversee the factory side and also the human resources of the company okay yeah awesome. and the family actually they have been running this business for about more than 20 years actually so if you can imagine right 20 years of business and their revenue also has been increasing a lot yeah, yeah which i will show you guys in the next slide and uh you know i'm not really surprised also because i've been eating super ring for like 15 years at yeah. least but i also remember that i don't know if you remember but super ring was a new kit on the block and like yeah. in terms of the right because i remember last time it was your jack and jill your roller coaster yeah and then yes. Pika, there's one like bika right yep. you can buy outside school and all that uh, and super ring was a bit later so that's why actually 20 years old they are in my head like they are quite young in that sense yes right? they're not as old as some of the other brands mr pringles and all that yeah okay definitely okay so just to share a little bit about how many percent of uh, interest stake that they have in the company so the founder himself uh, datuk sri song chen chuan he owns about 30 percent of the company's mm -hmm. interesting and then whereas both of his sons they own about two percent to about three percent each so yeah we have quite a bit of skin in the game that's good that's good yeah one thing I want to share with you guys is that uh, OFI didn't start off like straight away. They have like 20 kind of factories right off the bat. They start off with a double story uh, short block house first. Yeah. And they only made, uh, I think if I recall back, it's about, uh, it is, they make about crab snacks, kind mm -hmm. of like uh, confectionery snacks products. And they didn't really start off with Super Ring, of course. Yeah, it wasn't really born back then. And then from there, they slowly expand their business into eight uh, factories in Malacca, in Malacca itself. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it actually has been a very, quite a journey for them, for them to come this far. Uh, they are still, at the moment, they are still um, expanding their production very aggressively. So all, all, all eight factories are in Malacca? Uh, yeah, at the moment, wow. it's most of the factories are in Malacca. There's also some in Klang Valley, like wow. in PJ, like, yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. Okay, cool fact, cool fact. Yeah. All right, guys, before we move on, if you need another opinion on your research report, you can actually email us and we will actually give our view on your analysis. But do keep in mind that it must be in Google Doc and Google Sheet format. And please do not just submit us the financials of the company. If you do just send us the financials, we may or may not entertain your email. Tell us more about the business. How do you understand about it? And also your own valuation about the company. All right. Now, how about the finances, right? The financial performance, the revenue, maybe, you know, share a bit about the balance sheet. How have they performed over the past, uh, you know? All right, sure. Years? So I've actually extracted this financial data from Ticker. Mm, mm. And what it shows is that their revenue for the past 15 years has actually been growing quite steadily over the past 15 years. However, if you notice, the gross margin is actually dropping mm. quite aggressively. Uh, there's actually at one point, uh, they were maintaining at 20% gross margin. But recently, they have been actually dropped the 20% mark. And now it's down to 18% on average. So there's actually a, this is actually a sign that is telling us the cost of goods sold is actually rising. So what are the cost of goods sold? Uh, it is basically their sugar, their mm. potato, their packaging. The, the raw material and yeah, stuff, the, the plastics for their packaging. Yes. Things like yeah. That, yeah. yeah, so all of these commodity prices are actually rising and 
definitely with the high intense competition it is definitely going to affect their gross margin moving forward but one interesting fact that I found from OFI's uh, balance sheet is that their debts are actually reducing. Okay. Yeah, which means they are paying off all of their debts. And not only that, their cash also has been actually increasing. Yeah, so it's actually a healthy sign. It's showing that the business is um, performing very well. It could, be, it could be that <clears throat> because the margins are dropping so maybe that's why management is a bit more conservative yeah because they have to right the yes. businesses are not as good as before right yes, because definitely. think about it th there's a way to solve this is that the 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 the, the super ring they yeah. have to set a higher price but then if they set a higher price you know we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll still buy it you know yeah we will still buy it but it depends on how the consumer is going to take it yeah like exactly if, uh, are they we'll going to be buy it, nah, basically, yeah right? we will yeah, still yeah. buy it if the price increase right all right. Uh, another thing is, I think this is one of the metrics that you guys love, yes, Fireless, course, is course. the operating cash flow. So if you notice, uh, the operating cash flow for the past four years has actually been increasing a lot. Mm. So it actually have, I think it's close to double right. uh, for their operating cash flow. And for KPEX-wise, they have not really been expanding their production line. So they have been very cool about their capacity so far. Lah. And another metric that I want to share is the free cash flow. Mm -hmm. So free cash flow also, so far, so good. Yeah, you see, like, it, it doesn't really show that it is improving massively, but it is still healthy in a sense. It's still positive. Uh. Yeah. So wh when I look at this chart, what I find interesting is that when the free cash flow is higher, they actually uh, pay less dividends. Ah, uh, yes, definitely. Right, very interesting, yep. right? So, yep. like, yeah, I mean, if I was looking at this, I'll be like, hey, you know, you're a business that, uh, you, you know, you're not, you, does not require a lot of reinvestments and why you're not paying more dividends. That would be a question that I'll be asking, you know. Yeah. yeah, man. Maybe this one is something that you can post it in the yes. AGMs. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So what, do you think that this is a special company, Jonathan? Uh, personally, looking at how Super Ring is so famous nowadays, mm -hmm. not only in Malaysia and in internationally, uh, I do see like there's an everlasting demand for their uh, snack products. And especially in the snacks industry, uh, where the industry is actually growing at a 4% Kega rate uh, right. over the next, maybe next five years. Yeah. And not only that, uh, the management of the company is also has been very aggressively expanding their production line. Uh, they are actually innovating and venturing into new business segment. For instance, the, bis the biscuit, se uh, okay. biscuit uh, segment. So that is something that they are currently trying to test the water and mm -hmm. see whether they can make money out of it because from what I've read from their AGM is the biscuits, uh, the biscuit segment is giving them uh, quite a high gross margin, uh -huh. profit margin for it. So that is why, that's the reason why they're actually venturing into this segment. And the third point is international brand presence, mm. the Blackpink. Uh, yeah, it's basically free publicity for Super Ring and also for OFI's business. Right. Yeah. And last but not least is, I'm not sure you know about this, but they have this e-store uh, for no OFI. Yeah, so basically you can actually order your favorite snack on their website and it will actually deliver it to your house. Wow. Yeah. In my head, when I buy Super Ring, it's always at the, the like convenience the store, right? Convenience store. Yeah, correct. Right? Yeah. So now it's like because of, you know, MCO and whatnot, People wants people yearn for convenience, right. so it's actually it's a good move for them to do this, uh, execute this e store, and That's good, yeah, man. it's to like generate more traffic lah for their business. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Okay, guys, if you enjoyed the video so far, make sure you give the thumbs up and also to subscribe to our channel for more. And so feel free to share this video out to your friends or family. And don't forget to hit the bell so that you get notified when new videos are out. Okay, Jonathan, uh, no investment is perfect. So what are some of the bad things about not necessarily the management or that, but about the economics of the company, right? What are the risks involved if you were to be an investor? Right. Okay, so number one is definitely high competition. Now, actually, I want to ask you this. Uh, when was the last time have you had s snacks? Snacks? Well, every week I have snacks, right? Yeah, so particularly what brand do you actually consume? Usually, the uh, personally, I like uh, Twisties. Right. 
I like um, let me think. I don't really like like Jack and Jill. Mr. Pringles is always going to be okay. You're right. And then Super Ring, I won't like delivery one order Super Ring, but you know if someone gave it to me, yeah. I'll be very happy. Yeah. You know? So there's actually a lot of choices. Yeah, exactly. So hence, this is actually posing a threat to mm-hmm. OFI, which is the competition and also the um, loyalty, customer loyalty. Because snacks is basically, we want different types of, we want to consume different types of snacks, right? So yeah, so that is one of the risks about mm-hmm. the company. Uh, the next thing is, like I mentioned in their financials, the dropping gross margin is because of the high raw material costs which includes the sugar, potato, raisin, and paper price. Right. Yeah. And the third one, it is actually, ironically, this happened during MCO. Mm-hmm. So this risk actually didn't uh, came about 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. It actually came about recently, of which course. is production interruption. Right. So basically, when they stop making snacks, that's where you know that sales is going to be bad. Lah. Yeah. But I mean, looking at the revenue numbers, it... It got affected, but it didn't. It wasn't big. It wasn't really a big chunk. People still yeah. wanted super rings, so yes, they missed their super rings. Yeah, okay. but they could have made more if, let's say, yeah, uh, it is a hundred percent. And of course, but of course, now things you would expect things to be a bit different now because of MCO. Is that your thoughts or? Yes, definitely. Okay. If let's say in their factory there's like COVID cases happening around, they might need to like close down again. Yeah, or they yeah. can just hide it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so the last point is because 50% of their sales are export. Interesting, okay. Yeah, so this actually posed a threat to them if, let's say, the USD currency is weakening against the Malaysian ringgit. I see. Yeah. So this USD sales is not necessarily US, la, but like yeah. Korea. Yeah, there's Korea, so Asia. Most uh, Majority of it comes from the Asia country. Yes, actually. yes. Yeah. Fantastic. And, yeah. Good insight, man. Good insight. Yeah. Now, John, finally, we uh, wrap things up with the conclusion. Yes. And I think uh, I want to hear thoughts on what are the things you need to consider if you want to buy the stock or if you already own the stock, maybe buy some more or hold on to it or even sell it, right? All right. So what are some of the important things that you look at as a, a potential investor or a current investor? All right, sure. So actually, I made this chart, which is the share price to director's ownership. Yes. So the blue bar is the share price. I put it in terms of cent. And then the red color line is basically the director's ownership in terms of percentage. Okay. So you can see that uh, in 2013, 2014, then 2015, uh, the director actually has been selling their position, mm-hmm. uh, which is obvious because the share price is actually uh, flew quite tremendously mm-hmm. over that past three years. And then... Uh, in recent years, in 2019 to 2021, the directors actually started to accumulate a little bit in their position. So, yeah, that actually tells you that maybe the management is seeing something uh, like like their product is actually getting more traction, more demand. Yeah, hence you see the accumulation in uh, their side, which okay. is actually a positive sign for investors. Okay, okay. Yeah. And just want to give a little bit of my thoughts about the company overall. Uh, one thing I actually find it, uh, I actually wish that the company can improve is their gross profit margin. Of course, of course. Yeah, so I think one thing is uh, they have to compete with a lot of competitors mm-hmm. because this industry is basically it is the, it is the barrier to entry is so low yeah. that anybody can start the snacks and compete with them. Mm-hmm. So they have to work on something what we call the brand loyalty. Yeah, branding, yeah, and good branding. Good branding. Yeah, and good branding also, which is something they actually did from for their international internationally uh, when the Blackpink actually bought their products. Yeah. I, I actually think that their, their brand loyalty is, is, is decent, but the branding itself, because Super Ring equals cheap, Yes, correct. I think that's the problem now. So that's why you see gross margins. And so if gross margins were to fall, you need to have a bigger, uh, you know, quantity and yes. a bigger market, right? Yes. And I think that's probably something that uh, yeah. challenge that they're facing right now. Yeah, correct. So in in, co- in uh, economics term, it's called the economies of scale, yeah, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah, so that is something that they need to work on uh, for it. But I see there's a few more uh, positive signs about mm-hmm. their company, which is one is their debt is actually reducing and cash is actually increasing. Great. And it's similar 
to the times where in 2012 to 2014. Uh -huh. And bear in mind, uh, just now the chart that I show you about their share price, the, in 2012 to 2015, that is actually where they start to grow yes, like, to yes. the moon. Right. Start rising a lot. And not only that, their operating cash flow and free cash flow is also growing quite well. And it's okay. also is similar to the case as in 2012 and 2014. Mm, interesting. And you see that directors also is accumulating right now. So I don't know. Maybe yeah. it is something they are trying to tell us something that a hey, business is doing very well right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. All right. Thank you so much, Jonathan. And uh, for those of you who are watching, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did and you think that some other people should be watching this, your friends and family, please share it with them. Um, if you didn't know, we are also on Facebook, on uh, Instagram, on TikTok. We have a Telegram channel. All the links into the so into our socials are, is in the description. And uh, see you guys in the next video.